Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Final Fantasy IX. I am Rufal, playing this game for you. Woo! It's time for further deviation from our primary quest. Because, well, that's what you do in an RPG, isn't it? We did get the frog drop. Picked it up off screen. But of course, there is uh, more abilities to try and acquire. Let's do it. Nope. You won't be doing anything for you. There we are. It's amazing the kind of hoops you have to jump through to get to uh to get these blue magics sometimes. If I don't run in if I don't run into an iron I should be fine. Cue the impending doom. Oh, good. Oh, no. Alright, that one's gotta go. And it looks like so does that one. Well, nice. There is a blue magic to be gotten from those guys, but... Well, once they steal from you, their very next action is to run away, so... Just run past the Chocobo Forest, because we want this... archway. Ow! Leave me, me alone! No. Thirty-six. Six have almost four hundred hit points. Oh, wait a miss, BB. Ow. Want it again, little guy. Because it's unfortunately at the point where Ray and Zidane are just going to kill it if they hit it. Ow! 
There we go. Yeesh. stuff to learn. Quick! Dive in to a familiar looking place. Yeah, the box is still empty because, well, Marcus got at it. However, Sina apparently left his coffee behind. And far more importantly to us, Take a nice sip of the clean water. Yay! Now we're ready to step outside and take on the world. Or get clobbered by it. Speaking of. Hello, sir! I have to do at least, at least 97 damage to this thing. Yeah, I'll do it. Give me. Nom 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 nom. Hooray! That's a Moogle and a Chocobo. Hey guys. A mini, master of this forest. This Chocobo oh, is my friend. His name is Choco. Hey buddy. And this is... Hey, cute girl with long hair come by here? No, but an ugly girl came by here. Oh, guess she didn't come this way. Maybe she's headed towards Bermisha after all. I better get moving. You in a hurry? Yeah, sort of. And take Choco. You won't run into monsters if you ride Choco. Choco, come here. It's okay, don't force him. No, oh, if Choco hates, Choco runs away. Choco, come on. Fine, I'll just get to the point. These are gristle greens. You can call Choco outside the forest with these. My Chocobo footprints near the forest. Use gristle greens there and Choco will come. Choco likes you. You call and he'll come. You strain Choco. Make him strong. Come back to this forest after you call him in the world. I'll tell you a big secret. Yay? Here, Choco. Come on, let's go get a. Come on, Choco, let's go get a latte. Choco, how are you? Okay, buddy, what's the big secret? Welcome back. I knew you'd get along with Choco. Did you know? So Chocobo chooses its master and follows him forever. Well, lucky me. Choco ran away from his last master. That guy was mean. Choco didn't like him. I hope Choco escaped. We're living... Now we're living together. Here's the thing. Choco has the ability... Has ability to seek out treasures and items hidden underground. But I can't ride Chocobos. Can you help me? 60 guilt per game and you can... You keep all the items Choco takes up. 
You want to pay me 60 gil? Do I want to pay you 60 gil? No. But it's the only way you'll let me play. You'll let me play this game. Good call. I'll let you use Choco's ability for 60 gil per minute. Uh, this sounds like it, it should be up to Choco, not you, but whatever. Let's give it a try. Well, what we have here is Chocobo Hot and Cold. Uh, an interesting little, little treasure hunting minigame that is as, as strangely, at least from my point of view, as fun as it is infuriating. But I will say, if it wasn't for this music, I wouldn't like the game so much. <laughs> Should we get on with it? The game is actually checking where, where Choco's feet is at, not where his beak is landing. We found some money! We get a point. Take a couple steps, and then you strike the earth. You only want to run about two steps, because uh, otherwise you can completely overshoot where, uh, where something is buried. Where is it? And of course, if we find if we find four, if we find four discoveries, and they will give us will give us ten more seconds to search, and all all finds are worth double the points. Supposing there's something to find. Oh, let's tally up. The fancy thing about the game is that it's usually money positive. So on average, you're you're going to make more money than uh, you're going to uh, spend. What do we do with these points? Well, I'll give you a point for the for each item you find. Exchange points. That's when you save up enough. Fortunately, he will let us look at the list. And yeah, it can take quite a while to earn that many points. But generally speaking, you do want to uh, save up points. That's a deep dig. Ah, there's the thing we're looking for. Special bonus, five additional points. Hey, Chuga's beak became stronger, so now he hits the ground for greater amounts. Getting a lot stronger. The strength of Chuga's beak only matters for actually digging things up, of course. Yes, now he hits the, hits the ground for eight instead of six. Nice. There we go. 
at one point. An additional point for him being, being the fifth discovery. Or after the fourth, really. Dig! Woo! <laughs> What's this stone with patterns? Can I see? There's a picture of some location on the stone. This place must have tons of treasures. Why don't you go out of the forest and look for this place? It's free of charge, of course. Go outside. Press the menu button when you're riding Choco and, and choose a stone you want to find. You can dig it up. I got an idea. Let's call this stone Chocograph from now on. Chocograph? I think Choco's been searching for something all his life. There must be tons of treasures. You might find some cards, so you should leave some room in your card inventory. Right. Hey there, buddy. Now the stone with patterns is always going to be this first one. The stream side. Well, let's go have a look. Where will we find it? Well... Just want to match up the picture shown with uh, the terrain ain't available. Nice! Two elixirs, three high potions, four eaters, two Germanas boots. That, of course, will be different depending on what you've dug up. But, whilst we're out and about, let's actually go in and get some more blue magic. As soon as I can figure out how to dismount. Fortunately, Choco will just kind of stay there and wait for us. Business district. Why exactly? Well, not to do any business. Not in town, anyway. No, oh, our business is out of town. Which is over this way. Yes. Want to find some encounters. Oh, we also want to come here. Warning! Reports of an old man's ghost appearing here at Pinnacle Rocks. You're unable to verify the rumor. We recommend staying away, away from this area. Not sure if there are any encounters errors, errors to be found here, but there is treasure. Good treasure at that. All right. I'd actually find things to beat up and consume. Yeah, those will do. See, I want Freya to hit it again. Oh, you jerk. Guess I'm also gonna need Bibi to swap Freya 
or Quistus. Because if Abzidane or, or Freya hit Quistus, they'll probably kill. Oh! Ah, you made mistake, and now you are lunch. That's giving us potentially the strongest blue magic in the game. Under the correct circumstances, anyway. Yes. Aqua Breath. Cause water damage to all enemies, thus doing 25% of their maximum HP. Show and protect on all party members, but it's expensive. Limit Glove. Causes non elemental damage to your target when your hit point is 1. Your HP is 1. Yeah, if Quistus is, at, is not at 1 HP, this this attack will miss. If she is at 1 HP, then it will then it will do 9,999 damage. Guaranteed. It's a killer ability. Pumpkin Head. Damage is equal to the difference between our maximum HP and our current HP. Vanish makes the party member disappear. As in, they become unable to be hit by by physical attacks. Surprisingly useful. Magic attacks will still hit them, though. Frog Drop does damage equal to your to Questus's level times the number of frogs that you've caught. So, I believe at this point in time, it'll do 45 damage. Something to that effect. I don't know. Let's come over here into the forest and uh, try to get another ability. Hello, sir. Ow! Oh! I wanted today to hit it because it because it has over 500 hit points, but uh, not that much over 500. Have you wear the desert boots for now? Actually, and no one else is ready to move on from their accessory, so. You're ready to move on from those, though. Let's pick up the silver gloves. And try to find us another bomb. <laughs> Maybe what I should do... Take out Bird Killer. Take a... Because Bird Killer does, lets the day do 50% more damage to flying enemies. Like those bombs. So let's see how this works out. Either you're gonna get this ability or I'm gonna have to kill it. Oh, 
where it explodes. Sixty-eight. How much do you get it for, Freya? Hundred four. Okay. That gives me a working strategy for the next one I run into. Abilities being learned at the same time. Alright, you're done with the scarf. Yeah, the yellow scarf is how we're going to have to get Bird Killer onto Freya since we since I didn't get the bronze armor away uh, away from uh, Steiner. Strategy. Have Zidane hit it. Have Freya hit it. Hope nobody crits. At that point, it should be ready to consume. Nobody crits and nobody misses. Yeah, that ought to do it. Well, it's a game the mustard ball. What Mustard Bomb does is it is it inflicts the heat status on the enemy, at which basically amounts to being a de a kill spell. If we can land it, of course. There is one more enemy up here to uh, try and consume, and that enemy is the Carve Spider that uh, we had dealt with beforehand. Yeah, one of those. Get rid of the axe beak. Let's see if Freya can manage to not kill it. That's enough damage. Only need 97. 
Get us the level three defenseless. Which isn't as good as you might think. In fact, the spell is actually quite random. But what it does is that if the is that if the enemy's level is a multiple of three, for example, in our party, Quistus is the only person it can land on, then it will it will cause their the enemy's defense and magic defense to be reduced by a number between either zero or their current defense or mag and magic defense. It's very random. Could be game changing, but it's very random. Regardless, we're done up here. Back down into the valley. All right. I've looked over the the blue magic skill list, and uh, there's only one more blue magic that we can acquire. It's going to require us to run into one of those to an ironite. So. Let's take a moment to see if we can find one. Oh! Nice of you to show up right away. Dark Knight's kind of a nice encounter because I'm more worried about killing about it killing me than I am about killing it. Might have overdone it though. Nope. We're good. Hooray! Also, we get the Angel's Stack Blue Magic, which is... Yeah, it's straight up the weirdest of the Blue Magics, because, uh... It's not a spell per se, it's the ability to... It, the spell takes a remedy from from our inventory for each, for each character in the party and uses it on them. So it's not so much a spell as much as it is just a means to use multiple items at, at once. Oh well. Hey buddy. So, we'll go back to the Chocobo Hot and Cold because we can acquire up to eight more Chocographs. Naturally, though, that's that's gonna take a while. Well, that being said, we really only want uh, two of them before we actually move on with with the game. Whether we'll get it to is entirely up in the air. Oh, you're here somewhere. Anytime now, Choco. I need to get you a latte. Chocolate. Dig darn you! Yeesh. Oh, conveniently, uh, this is one of the ones that uh, we definitely want to find before moving on. The other one goes here. As if you gotten the, if you gotten those three, by all means, just kind of pick up and carry on. <laughs> of course, there's another item which we might find right here. 
which is a, uh, well, it's a chuckle-graph key. Because we can't just find whole chuckle-graphs, no! One of the chuckle-graphs actually is, it was split into, it exists in six pieces. And we can actually find two of them, um, here. Could, in fact, get them with, uh, before moving on. Hey, we we dug something up within five seconds of, of our previous dig. Digging something up. So we get five bonus points. We'll always strike the ground before moving on. Really, that's your only chance of find, uh, finding something that quickly. Not the dumb luck of walking up and up and just sta and uh, to find yourself standing on exactly the right spot. Yay! Fortunately, Mene only comes up to to tell us of our of our our uh, four plus us discovery thing once per visit. So in subsequent subsequent games, yeah, he's not gonna fly up to us. Found it. Hey, too many. Man, I was onto something. I was onto something good there, jerk. Uh. Now I feel lucky if I if I manage to get four, if I manage to get the four digs with more than ten seconds left on the clock. Of course, it's like it's a strangely momentum-based game. Aim sometimes. Frequently, I seem to be at 30 seconds before I, before I find my first find.
You holding out on me, Mene? Chocograph piece. Can I see? It's a fragment of a chocograph. There's something carved on the back. It's faded. I'll put it in, it in key under your your item menu. Take a look. I think you're supposed to collect the pieces until you complete one chocograph. Yes, and as I alluded to earlier, that is going to require us to find six like, such pieces. Sipping coffee at sunrise is the best thing life has to offer, y'all. You say so, Sinna. I shall follow in the footsteps of Sid Id the First, the Explorer King. The true hunter must seek his targets in the sky. Look at here. There. Danger in the sky. If you dare to face it, use this Rick to find your way. Okay, then. Oh, yeah. That will do for now. Next time, well, I'll have dug up all the chocograph pieces that, that, I'm, that I'm going to search for, and we'll move on to Gizmo Luke's Grotto. We'll see you then. Later. <laughs>